All right, so that last video was a bit of a doozy. In this one, we're gonna slow things down a little bit. We're gonna go over the main record modes that we have available in Studio One, also a couple preferences and some metronome options. Let's get started. First things first, let's create a track that we can use to record. We'll give this a nice bright color, maybe with something like yellow. Um, I'm going to just expand this out. Um, I'm going to be using the auto input monitoring workflow, which if we click our options, this is this option over here, which is called tape style monitoring in studio one, as you know, now the minute I do this, I just have to record enable this track. We understand the behaviors when it's in stop mode, you will hear the live mode in, in terms of being able to monitor what's live. When it's playing back, it's going to monitor what's playing back on the track. And when you are actually recording, you will hear your live input as well. Okay, that being said, I'm gonna switch over to live mode here, and I'm actually gonna just change my monitoring setup over here within my controller. So now I'm monitoring exactly what's coming out of the DAW. First things first, I'm going to hover over this little icon over here. This is called the record panel. We can also get to it through a shortcut. It's also available in view over here, record panel. Now, when we're going to be taking a look at takes to layers in the next video, but Basically, just a real quick precursor to that is depending on what type of workflow that you want to work, you can toggle between working with takes to layers on or off. In this case, I'm actually going to take them off because I just want to be able to record uh, the audio on a single track and it's not going to go into different layers. This is a setting that I like to use and depending on how I want to record, this is something that I may be toggling on and off. Second thing I wanna look at is metronome options. Now, right beside this same section over here, notice we have kind of like a click track icon, which is our metronome, and then we have metronome options. When you're talking about some of these functions that we're going to get into, the click track in general uh, directly integrates with these certain modes. So for example, pre-count or pre-roll, also the amount of pre-roll that's set, um, we have different click options that we can set. So this is something that I will be hopping back and forth to. Now we can get to this, like I say, just by selecting this little wrench icon, which is metronome setup. But if you see me opening it up without clicking that, it's because I'm using a keyboard shortcut. So just something to keep in mind. I think it's pretty important to talk about the click because this is something that directly integrates with recording. Now in Studio One, we have a key command, which is a shortcut if you use your stock Studio One key commands, which is C. And this will activate and deactivate the click. Uh, if you have the Logic Pro key commands loaded, this will obviously uh, be different. But if we need to, we can also just click directly within the GUI and this will activate and deactivate the metronome. So the one thing I wanna point out over here is that whereas in other DAWs, you may load an actual software instrument which generates click sounds, within Studio One, the click is actually available within your metronome setup. So again, I'm going to click the metronome setup and notice over here that I have these different settings. Okay, also notice that I can activate my click globally, but then I could turn it off for my main outs. And if I had a headphone cue send that was being sent out to somebody else, where they were using a different set of outputs, for example, I could have their click on, but mine off. Now I could turn all the clicks off or on globally, but I can control the individual click per output. And also I control the level of the click. So what does that sound like in practice? Okay, well, first of all, one other thing I wanna point out is if I play this, so I'm actually gonna take myself out of record enable. I'm gonna switch back so I'm hearing myself in my direct monitoring. Now, if I was to press play, notice that we have a click sound. I can turn this off on the main outs over here. I can also adjust the level. If you click this little fader, we can adjust this level up or down. Now, another thing to point out is we have lots of different sounds that are available within the Studio One metronome setup, which is basically, think of it as a very basic sampler that's triggering these click sounds. One thing you might be happy to note is that we have logical one and logical two. Let's take our off beats off for now. This might be something that sounds a little bit more familiar. And if you like working this way, all you have to do is store a preset. I'm not sure if I stored a preset already. Doesn't look like it. So let's go ahead and store one. It's kind of like a logic click sound. So I can store preset and I can say like LPX click. I will just click okay. Now I have this available and I can also load different presets. So I have one that's a Pro Tools click sound. 
And I also have the volumes dropped way down so that it sounds kind of as loud as I need it to be when the volume is at zero. But you can basically load these different presets. I have LPX click, I have my default click sounds. You can have different setups for different types of sessions. But one thing to make note of is that whatever you store as the last used click, this is a global thing. So if I started a new song, the next song I start, it's going to load up Logical 1 and Logical 2. If I wanted to load a very specific preset, then that's something that I can do uh, in terms of loading a preset for a specific tracking session. All right, so now that we've kind of got a start on that, let's get going. I'm going to move back to, um, let's actually, let me switch my monitoring on my controller and I'm going to enable uh, my record arm and my monitor arm. So this will just allow me to hear myself all the time. So the first function that I want to look at, or the first record mode, is pre-count. Now this is very similar to what you might be familiar with in Logic. And if I open up the metronome setup, notice that as I change these, that you can actually change them from the metronome setup as well. Or they have their individual shortcuts that you can trigger them by. Now the pre-count, you basically set the amount of bars that you want in your pre-count. So if I wanted one bar, I would just leave it at one bar. What this means is that you just park your cursor at a position and then wherever I want to record, if I wanted to engage recording from bar nine, it's going to give me a pre-count for whatever is happening. In fact, let's unmute all the other tracks, even though I don't have a musical reference for this. Now, if I press play, I just drop right into recording right over here. There's just a pre-count, but I'm not actually hearing any pre-roll. So, this might be what you want if you know exactly that you're coming in on the downbeat and you just want to record there, that might be something that works out. Now, let's take a look at another mode. So in this case, again, we can choose these from opening up the metronome setup. I'm going to switch over to pre-roll. Pre-roll is a little bit different in that you define the amount of pre-roll that you want. So in this case, let's say I want two bars of pre-roll. Okay, now I'm going to head over here and if I start the recording, it's basically going to play two bars previous. In fact, let's also just trim this back so we don't hear that. So I'm going to park my cursor at bar 13 and the minute I engage record, we're going to have two bars of pre-roll and then it's going to start recording at bar 13. So it's playing back, passing to bar 12. As soon as it drops bar 13, boom, we go right into a record mode over here. Okay, I'm going to push stop. Notice with this mode that perhaps you have a little bit of a pickup or something like that. If I drag this audio back, check this out, I have lots of information that was happening before my record point. That's because of a very important preference that I have enabled. We're going to go to um, audio, our preferences. And if I go to audio, notice I have a pre-record audio input set to 10 seconds. You can set this to five seconds, you could set it to 30 seconds, anything you want. This is a lifesaver because especially if you have a punching point that you set to happen on a hard downbeat of a bar, if you had a little bit of a pickup, maybe it's an eighth note or maybe the artist just started a little bit before, you will have all that information. So in general, I think this is a really great option to have enabled. At one point I had it set to 30 seconds or 60 seconds, but I think even 10 seconds or five seconds is enough. So that's just a little kind of like a side tip. So that's pre-count and pre-roll. The next one I wanna go over is auto punch. Now auto punch in Studio One works a little bit differently than you would expect it to work. Cause in Logic Pro we have kind of like a separate auto punch zone or uh, handles that we can set and they can be different than our loop. In Studio One, it's using the loop range as your auto punch. So a quick shortcut that we can do is just make a range selection like this, and then I'm going to do Shift P, and this will set my loop bars or my loop range, or in logic terminology, my cycle range. Now that this is open, let's switch over here to this icon over here, which is called Auto Punch. Now, notice that auto punch is not available in the metronome. There's a very specific reason why it's not available. That's because when you work in auto punch mode, you will manually set the amount of pre-roll that you want. So if I wanted two bars of pre-roll, or maybe I wanted something really specific like one and a half bars of pre-roll, as opposed to setting a pre-roll that's always the same amount like we can with the pre-roll mode, in auto punch mode, you simply set your loop indicators over here. I have this set to snapping just like this. So they're snapping to my grid. 
You simply set your loop, you manually set the amount of pre-roll that you want with your cursor playback, and then I can just engage record. Now this is going to go through and it's only going to record me during the loop bracket that I've set. So I'm going to let this play, we're going to keep playing all the way to the end. That drum loop's a little bit distracting, but that's okay. Notice how it only recorded in these three different sections. Okay, so again, we have pre-count, which will allow me to set my pre-count amount based on the metronome setup, which I could set to, for example, two bars, or I could set to one bar. This will allow me to basically just have a count off and then drop right in. We gotta make sure that our click is enabled. Two, three, four. Now I'm dropping right in at this punch in point. I'm gonna globally turn my click off for this. The second mode we have is our pre-roll mode, which is indicated by this icon over here. In pre-roll, you will set the amount of bars in the metronome setup. This is set to one bar here, so let's snap over here. Pre-roll is gonna give me one bar, it's gonna back up, and then it's gonna drop into record mode. And then of course, the last mode that we have is an auto punch mode, where we literally have to make a loop selection, but we make sure that our loop is deactivated. This will be seen as kind of like a punch in, then we set our pre-roll with whatever amount we want manually. We make sure that we're in the auto punch mode. And then this will just punch us in only for that section. And like I said, if we always have that pre-record buffer enabled. If you have something that had a little bit of a pickup, you're really easily able to kind of peel that back and use that. So these are the three main um, recording modes, if you will, that we have when we're working in Studio One. Now, one other thing I want to kind of bring into the equation here is... We don't have to use any of these. And a lot of the times I don't use any of these unless I need something to be very specific. In addition to having pre-count, pre-roll and auto punch, you can also just do manual drop-ins, which I tend to use all the time. I can just have nothing selected over here. I can just drop right into record mode. I'm actually going to enable my click. And then as I let this play, I could stop. And then maybe I wanted to do a punch in manually all I have to do is literally, I'm going to play back. I'm actually gonna change my record mode in this case to auto input so we, we can hear what was played back. Drop right in. Press the space mode. bar. I'm actually going to enable my click. I'm gonna punch in for this section. I'm gonna punch out. I think we've covered enough ground in this video for this section. In the next video, I wanna take a look at using comps and layers and see how that works with respect to a direct comparison with logic. So we'll catch you for more in the next video.